portfolio performance measures. So we're right to say that there are several methods. There are several methods. There are several methods which can be used to evaluate, which can be used to evaluate, which can be used to evaluate performance of the portfolio, which can be used to evaluate performance of the portfolio. The most common methods, the most common methods include, the most common methods include, number one, we have sharpest or sharps, portfolio performance measure. Number two, we have trainers, portfolio performance mission. Number three, we have Jensen's portfolio performance mission. And number four, we have information ratio. Method or appraisal method. Let's start with the first one, Sharp's Portfolio Performance Mission. Sharp's <clears throat> method. We like to see that. This indicates the percentage. This indicates the percentage. This indicates the percentage. Of excess returns, this indicates the percentage of excess return. This indicates the percentage of expected return generated by a portfolio, generated by a portfolio, generated by a portfolio above the risk free rate, generated by a portfolio, generated by a portfolio above the risk. Free it above the risk, free it as measured using standard deviation, as measured using standard deviation, <clears throat> as measured using standard deviation. Full stop. It's evaluated as follows. It's evaluated as follows. So to get the shops for the portfolio. You will take the expected return of the portfolio minus risk free of a standard deviation of the portfolio. And to get the sharps for the market, which will act as a benchmark, you will take expected return of the market minus risk free of a standard deviation of the market. And this one will act as a benchmark. Mm -hmm. Number two, we have trainers method. Trainers method. I do so. 
that this indicates this indicates the percentage of excess returns this indicates this indicates the percentage of excess returns this indicates the percentage of excess returns generated by a portfolio generated by a portfolio generated by a portfolio over the risk free rate 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 a measured using beta factor measured using beta factor measured using beta factor also it's evaluated as follows it's evaluated as follows it's evaluated as follows so to get the trade for the portfolio you take expected return of the portfolio minus risk free over the beta of the portfolio and to get the trainers for the market you take the expected returns of the market minus risk free you divide by the beta for the market of which you know that the beta for the market is always equal to one so this will be equivalent to expected return of the market minus risk free When you look at decision criteria, now if the sharps for the portfolio or the trainers for the portfolio is greater than the sharps for the market or the trainers for the market, that shows there is superior performance. But if the sharps for the portfolio or the trainers of the portfolio is less than the sharps for the market, or the trainers for the market that shows inferior performance. If the sharps for the portfolio or the trainers for the portfolio is equal to the sharps for the market or the trainers for the market, it shows efficient performance. Number three, method number three. We have Jensen's method. Right, you see that? This method, this method uses alpha. This method uses alpha. This method uses alpha to measure the performance of the portfolio. To measure the performance of the portfolio. To measure performance of the portfolio. So how do we compute alpha? Mm -hmm. Said so alpha is the difference between the expected returns of the portfolio and the returns of the portfolio. When you let me see that Jensen Alpha method, Jensen Alpha method assumes assumes assumptions of Capem assumes assumptions of Capem assumes the assumption of Capem and it assumes Capem is correct. And it assumes Capem is correct. He assumes Capem is correct. I.e., I.e., that means to get the return of the portfolio, we use the Capem assumption risk free plus expected return of the market minus risk free 
you multiply by the beta I show that I yeah. then we have the decision criteria decision criteria now if alpha is greater than zero that shows there is superior performance this one also means that if alpha is greater than zero that means the expected return of the portfolio is greater than the return of the portfolio if alpha is less than zero that means it's negative that means the expected return of the portfolio is less than the return of the portfolio that shows inferior performance but if alpha is equals to zero that means that the expected return of the portfolio is equals to the returns of the portfolio that shows there is efficient performance then lastly number four information ratio method information ratio method how to say that this evaluates the portfolio performance this evaluates this evaluates this evaluates the performance of the portfolio average returns average returns average returns average returns in excess of benchmark portfolio average returns in excess of benchmark portfolio benchmark portfolio for so Mm -hmm. it's evaluated as follows it's evaluated as follows it's evaluated as follows so how do we get the information ratio method now to get the information ratio method you take alpha you divide by the non-systematic risks non-systematic risks non-systematic risks so now let's go on in a session from the handout handout page five handout page five question two handout page five question two Sorry, question number three, question three, not question two. And we are told that consider a company holding portfolio A and B. Mm -hmm. The risk free rate is 8% and the expected return of the market is 12%. And the standard deviation of the market, it's 8%. And the following details are also provided. So we have portfolio A and B. We have the betas of the portfolio. We have the standard deviation. And then we have the expected return of the portfolio. Required. 
evaluate the portfolio using number one is the Sharps measure. Number A, Sharps measure. So here we have two, uh, two uh, portfolios. We have portfolio A, portfolio B, and then you need to compute for the benchmark, that's the market. And how do we get the sharps of the portfolio? It's expected returns of the portfolio minus risk three, you divide by the standard deviation of the portfolio. We already have the expected returns. Expected return of portfolio is 13. Here we have 18. You minus the risk free rate. So the risk free rate we have it's eight. Then you divide by the standard deviation of the portfolio. Portfolio A is 15. Portfolio B we have is 12. Then you also need to compute for the market. Now for the market, you take the expected return of the market minus the risk free of a standard deviation of the market. So how much is the expected return of the market? So it's 12, you minus the risk free rate, which is eight. You divide by the standard deviation of the market. How much is the standard deviation of the market? We have it's eight. So what do you have? So this is four by eight, you get 0 0.5, 10 over 12. 0 0.83, five over 15, that's a bad, that is 0 0.33, right? Good. And then we comment. Holding the market to act as the benchmark. For the market is 0 0.5, portfolio A. Is it superior or inferior? So this is inferior. B is 0 0.83, that means already above the market. So that shows there is a what? Yeah, there is a superior performance. Number B, number B I to evaluate using the trainer's mission. We have portfolio A, B, we also need to compute for the market. Trainers for the portfolio, you take expected returns of the portfolio, you minus risk free it. Now, trainers is concerned with the systematic risk measured using the beta factor, divided by the beta of the portfolio. So expected return of portfolio, here we had 13, here we had 18, for the market was 12. You minus the risk credit, the risk credit does not change. We have eight, then you divide by betas. Beta of A is, beta of B is, beta for the market is, good. We see that the beta for the market is always equal to one. And this is five, 10 divided by two, you also get five, 12 minus eight, you get four. Then you comment. Holding the market to act as a benchmark. Mm -hmm. The market is four. A and B is five. So what does that show? Yeah, there is superior performance. Superior. Superior. Good. C. C. Jensen's mission. Yeah, we said that Jensen's uses alpha. And how do we get alpha? Alpha is the difference between the expected returns of the portfolio and the returns of the portfolio. And then we say that Jensen's alpha assumes that CAPEM is correct. So therefore it uses the assumption of CAPEM. So here we have two portfolio. We have portfolio A, portfolio B. We have the expected returns of the portfolio. How much is the expected return of portfolio A? We have that team, we have. So you compare expected return of the portfolio against the return of the portfolio. Returns of the portfolio use CAPEM to get its risk-free plus expected returns of the market, not of the portfolio of the market, minus risk-free, you multiply by the beta. Risk-free rate is eight. How much was the expected return of the market? 
was 12. You raise the risk free rate, which is 8. Then you multiply by the beta. Beta of portfolio is 1. And for base, 2. Here you get 12. That's 4 times 2, 8. 8 plus 8, you get 16. Now let's get alpha. So that to get alpha, you take expected return of the portfolio minus return of the portfolio. It's going to be 13 minus 12, you get 1. 18 minus 16, you get 2. Now let's comment. You have said that if alpha is positive, that means the expected return is greater than the return of the portfolio. That shows there is a superior performance. So superior performance, superior performance. Good. So you can copy now.
May 2017, question 2B. Now let's start with question 2A, question 2A. That's common or general knowledge. An ice drift factor that might be responsible for financial distress in a farm, six marks, drift factor. What are the factors that might lead to financial distress in a farm? Sorry, poor planning, correct. Sorry, a big loss. Eh? Sorry, unpaid loans. Uh, that's high, high operating cost. Eh? Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Good. Mismanagement of funds. Rukman, what do you want to say? Also, poor management, adverse economic condition, also changes in government, what? Adverse changes in government policies, such as high taxes, industrial disturbances, uh, most of the inflation, inflation actually does not affect much, eh? because what happens to inflation, eh? is a two-way. If it affects the cost of good, you also change the price, right? Yes. So inflation, it's a systematic risk. Eh? It cuts across. Change in yes. Change in uh, exchange rates. Change in exchange rates. Mostly <laughs> adverse changes. Eh? Yeah, due to the cost of the strong currencies. Eh? If you don't manage your currency well, so the economy will suffer. Part B of the question. What do you think the government should do to avoid the high cost of dollar? Because the rate at which it's rising, so Kaide don't blame the government for this. Eh? The cost is going up, not just by because of the actions of the government. No, mm -mm, that's what they call a gobbled. But you see now, you always blame the government. Eh? Yeah, for those who are in business, they can understand. Eh? If you are if you're importing something, and then you tell your current dollar in a panda. They might not understand, but you as a trader, you are understanding what's happening. So what will happen to your prices? It will go up, eh? but you see the customer will blame the government. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something you need to see them from an economic perspective, not just like a common one. See them like an educated person. Yeah, because government has good machinery. They have advisors. Don't think those advisors are sleeping on their job. They are not sleeping on their job. They are doing all they can. But see now what problem, uh, the problem is that the common one IT might not understand. Might not understand. Hmm. Yeah. Do you read business news? <coughs> or the business newspapers? That's where you get all this information. But if you just listen to the po political perspective, you'll still be blaming, uh, blaming the government. Yeah. What do you think the government can do because of the high, high, high rise of dollars? Because, okay, sometime, eh, you see, we cannot control the dollar, but they have something they can do to that, of which I can see they have tried to adopt those policies. Eh? They are trying to propose. Eh? Then you go to the ground. Now the farmers, they are saying, no, 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 we don't want that. Yeah. Well, isn't it for the discussion for the last two days? 
you know something you might not think they are for the good of the nation, but you think they are only cutting across one edge. Hmm? Yeah, because whenever you are doing what you call uh, the global trade, they always pegged on the strong currencies. So that means the currency goes up, the cost of importation for the government becomes high. Are you getting? So how can we minimize that? To avoid using that pegged price. Butter trade is one of the best strategy. Give us this, we give us this, we give you this. So in that case, you not be affected by movement in prices of dollars. That's one of the strategies. Eh? So many of you can be on a device, eh? Okay. Ah, now that's two question. Two B. The four information related to the performance of six portfolio. Yeah, you must be having a good deal of your country. Eh? Let's not blame the readers. What have you done to improve the, the life of others? Eh? Because you are you're part of it, let me tell you. Eh? Yeah, because someone who has employed someone is impacting on someone, right? So instead of complaining all the time, yeah, now wait for the next five years. So it's upon you now to make a change. Cost ikienda ju, know how now to manage your costs. The four information related to the performance of six portfolio over seven year period. So you have performance P, Q, R, S, T, U. Then we have the market and then we have the risk rate. Then we have the average annual returns. Average. What do you mean by average? Average returns is the same as what we call expected return. Returns. Because to get the expected return, you just take the return times the probability of occurrence. So can you write it as ERP, that's the expected returns of the portfolio. Then we have the standard deviation of the average annual returns. Then we have correlation with the market returns. That's our R. Required. Rank the performance of the above portfolio using number one, Sharp's method. Number two, trainer's method. So number one, we start with Sharp's method so that sharp method uses business risk as measured using the standard division so you have the portfolios here p q r s t u so in this case they want us to rank so you don't have to compute for the market Sharps for the portfolio you take expected return of the portfolio minus risk free, you divide by the standard deviation of the portfolio. So take the expected returns, expected return of P we have it's 18.6, we have 14.8, 15.1, negative nine, 26.5. Uh -huh. Then we minus the risk free rate. How much the risk free rate? Risk free rate is nine, correct. Then you divide by the standard division of the portfolio. Standard division of portfolio you have is, we have 27, we have 18, we have eight, we have 21.2, we have four, we have 19.3. Uh -huh. The first one you get is zero point three six uh -huh. mm -hmm. nine one uh -huh. t negative four point five r zero point seven six s zero point six one. Zero point 
three tone. Now the question was, you rank them in terms of performance. So the higher, the better the performance. Which one has the highest sharps? This is number one. Number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. Good. Number two of the question. We are to use trainer's method. We have the portfolios. We have portfolio P, Q, R, S, T, and U. Trainers for the portfolio, you take expected returns of the portfolio minus risk free of a beta of the portfolio. So you already have the expected returns of the portfolio. We have it 18.6, we have 14.8, 15.1, 22.0. Negative nine and 26.5. Then we deduct the risk free rate, which is nine. Then you divide by the beta factor. We are not given the beta factor. So, beta, we say that you take correlation between the security and the market, standard division of the security over standard division of the market. I told you that the three formula should be at your fingertips on how to compute the beta. So, we have the correlation with the market returns. Now, between P and market, we have it 0 0.81, 0 0.65, 0 0.98, 0 0.75, 0 0.45, 0 0.63. Then you multiply by the standard division of the security or the portfolio. Here we have 27, 18, 8, 21, 2, for a 19.3, and then you divide by the standard division of the market. How much was the standard division of the market? Mm -hmm. That's the beta for the market. We want the standard division of the market is 12. It's already there, 12. Uh -huh. So now give me that. Sorry, 1.82. The last one is 1.01. Which one? Uh -huh. 0 0.98. Uh -huh. 0 0.15. Zero point six five. One point three three. So now let's divide by the beta of the portfolios. One point eight two. Zero point nine eight. Zero point six five. One point three three. Zero point one five. One point zero one. Five point five point two seven. Yes. Six. Six eight. Five point nine two. Nine point nine point three eight. Eighteen fifteen. That is one twenty negative. Hi, sis. Nine point seven seven. Eh? You, you. It's nine point seven seven. So let's rank the performance. Seventeen point three three. So now let's rank. Which one has the highest? Trainers, 
you number one. Part C of the question. Part C. Compare the ranking. So first of all, let's compare the ranking. Now using the sharps, P was number four, P is number five. Q number five, Q number four. Number two, here it's number three. Number three here, number two here. Are the ranking the same? No. So now the question was compare the ranking using the two different method in B above and explain two reasons behind the differences. I had mentioned the two differences when I was computing. I had to me any match of us. What's the difference between the two? This one is a standard deviation. This one uses beta factor. Standard deviation is used to measure the total risk. Beta factor is to measure systematic. Good. Now you can copy.
So now that's the end of portfolio and CAPEM topic.